I am an old poet. Forget safety. Live where you fear to live. Destroy your reputation. Be notorious. I have tried prudent planning for long enough. From now on, I'll be mad. Rumi. I am an old poet who lives in a little writing cottage, not far from the Ohio River, below the falls, where the Lewis and Clark expedition began. I live where great blue herons make their nest and bald eagles soar, where coyotes roam across the woodlands, where creeks and streams into river flow. For decades. I have produced so many creative projects. I often don't know how or why I can or should possibly add another, but I continue to wake up in the middle of the night with visions, with images, with full-blown ideas coming to me, and I want to honor them because I know they are gifts from the creative forces of the universe, and I want with all my heart and soul. To help them reach fruition, so I find room for just one more, and one more, then one more. I give each one my love as they grow from dreams into books and albums and films and concerts and festivals and non-stop music and poetry and somniacathons. Each work I create. Is born of a collective humanity, is driven by the creative fire in me, is a brilliant, huge creative happening of kaleidoscopic shape and form. Art seizes me and makes me its instrument. I'm not simply a poet acting freely in pursuit of a merely private end. A long time ago, I learned to allow art. To realize its purposes through my life force energies, artists have moods, free will, personal aims, but as artists, we are bearers of a collective humanity, carrying and shaping the common unconscious life of the species. We are blood-filled vessels racing to the heart. Beyond chaos is an ocean. Of consciousness, all streams reach her. We are a polyglot commingling. We are blood-filled vessels racing to the heart. Vapors rise; the ocean feeds herself. All come and go her way. We dwell in the shadow realms of the creative imagination. The psychic makeup of creative people attracts attention, but the actual artistic achievement. The creative work itself is the bedrock of inquiry when it is directed toward understanding the artist. For the artistic disposition adheres to a charisma that has collective, universal aspects. We are all dirty potatoes floating in the same tub of polluted water, and the more we bang into each other by openly, honestly sharing the stories of our lives. The more we come clean, my goal is to uplift and inspire, comfort and heal, and awaken everyone to the awareness that a non-stop river of creative fire flows through us all, each and every moment of our lives, and we must relearn, unlearn what has been force-fed into us, and accept and embrace. The synchronicity that life is filled with. Nothing happens by accident. There is a reason for everything, whether we understand it or not. So the faster we can embrace change, the number one universal principle, the sooner we will flow with the natural way of living, of being. Our dreams wait for us to bring them to life. One day I turned to my beloved Jen Bug and said. When I die, all I want to be remembered for is the love I shared with everyone, everywhere. Through our heart-to-heart -heart visits and talks, 
I want us all to gather around the glowing hearth of love, sharing our poems, stories, and songs. When I die, I hope folks from all walks of life, near and from afar, will share poems and stories and sing raucous and sacred songs, celebrating friendship and love and all the terrible beauty called life. I live to bring people together through the arts, especially poetry and music. I believe the best music is poetry, and the best poetry is music. After all my years of struggle and strife, I have determinedly fought for and finally won the freedom to write every day and every night. For these final years of my fantastic, miraculous, blessed life, and with a heart full of love, I thank each and every one of you, especially my beloved Jim Pug. <laughs>